Hi everyone, welcome to episode 5 of the Dynatrace Community Tips and Tricks. Usually Andy presents these, today you're with me. Uh, I'm Adam Gardner, I'm part of the open source team here at Dynatrace uh, on the developer relations side. I specifically and primarily focus on observability and security. So today we're going to focus on how to export your Dynatrace configuration, so dashboards and management zones and alerting profiles and things like that with a, an open source tool that we've created called Monaco. So how does Monaco work? Well, fundamentally, obviously, as you know, Dynatrace offers a set of APIs to manage your configuration. And Monaco is a nice friendly wrapper around that uh, th those APIs. So Monaco gives you lots of benefits kind of for free, quote unquote. So things like retry logic, um, if configuration depends on on one another, Monaco understands that. There's a, there's a lot more that Monaco can do. Um, and we'll actually have a much broader session on Monaco coming up in a few weeks. So I don't want to get too deep into it today. Um, if you do want to learn more about Monaco, as I say, there is some stuff coming in the near future. But right now, uh, you can follow each of these QR codes, uh, each of these links. So the community tips and tricks, that top link, that all of the code, all of the demo that I show today will be at that link under episode five. Um, the YouTube video with Christoph and Andy is an excellent overview of what Monaco is and why you might want Monaco. And then the engineering blog post link uh, down at the bottom gives you all of our um, the other links to the Monaco GitHub repo and, and the standards and the spec and all that kind of thing. So without further ado, it's demo time. Okay, so what we're going to do again is export our existing Dynatrace configuration because sooner or later you've either um, created lots of configuration manually in the tenant or for one reason or another, you just want to back up that configuration. So this command here is uh, curling a shell script. Now, I've sh for the video purposes, I've shortened the link. Um, if you go to the GitHub repo, that's the full link, and you can actually look at the shell script and see how it's working. We pipe that to bash, and we provide it some input parameters, the first one being our Dynatrace tenant or environment URL, and then the second being an access token. So I will grab my... Dynatrace tenant URL and put it in here. And then I will jump into Dynatrace and create my access token. First question you'll have is what permissions do my access does my access token need? If you go to the Monaco um, website, there is a particular page that shows you all of the configuration types. So um, this is your Dynatrace configuration type. So alerting profiles, dashboards, et cetera, et cetera. It shows you the API endpoint that we use, uh, that Monaco uses to hit. And it also shows you the, t the token permissions that you need to give your access token. Most of them are read and write configuration. However, some like SLOs and synthetics need slightly different configuration. And I'll show you that in a moment. So for now, I'm gonna go with the kind of standard read and write configuration. So I give my token a name, and then I can type uh, read configuration and write configuration. Generate my token, copy that, put it in there. And go to my Ubuntu box, and you can see I'm just in a directory here, temporary directory with nothing in it. So I now run that command. The command will go grab a shell script and the shell script itself downloads the Monaco binary. And you can see now that Monaco has been triggered and is retrieving all of the content from my Dynatrace environment. And there it is. The shell script says backup complete. Look for a folder called DT backup. Now, just before we do that, I want to highlight some of these log lines here. 
you'll notice that we get warnings saying Toking is missing the required scope, and it even suggests the scope that you need, like create and read synthetic monitors. This is precisely what I was talking about before, where I haven't given my token the right permissions to retrieve synthetic locations. These Warnings are warnings. They're not necessarily errors. Of course, if you don't need synthetic monitors, then you don't need to worry. So if you uh, see warnings like this, just have a quick review and make sure that you've got all of the configuration um, and given all of uh, given the token, all of the permissions that you need. So now if I uh, do an LS, we can see the Monaco binary itself, an environments.yaml file, which is what Monaco needs to know where to look. And the DT backup folder is the important one. So if we move into the DT backup folder, there are lots and lots of subfolders which should match your expectation of the types of configuration that uh, Monaco has retrieved. So for example, if we look at auto tag, which are all of your auto tag rules, I've only got one in this environment, but you will have one uh, YAML file, and then you may have multiple JSON files. So what you might, Monaco tries to be clever and tries to kind of variableize things, but you might want to go into here. And I would actually advise you do go into these folders and kind of clean up uh, the configuration. Make sure there's no personally identifiable information in those uh, rules, those, those, those files. And then those files are ready to upload uh, to Git. And you can now treat your Dynatrace configuration as, uh, as, as Git ops. So I'll just very quickly show you both of those files. The autotag.yaml has a structure like this. So basically every piece of configuration, every different tag has a, uh, a list like this. And then the variables come in this section here. And if I show you how that maps to the JSON file, this JSON file is very, very similar to what you would be pushing if you were manually using the Dynatrace APIs. So this is your post body payload. The only difference here is that Monaco has automatically created some variables like this dot name. So this dot syntax and this name actually refers to the value in the YAML file. So don't worry too much if you don't understand. All of this is documented on the Monaco website. And as I say, we're going to have a, a future session, uh, a deep dive in a few weeks. But that's it. You basically retrieved all of your configuration from Dynatrace, and you're ready to start treating your, config your Dynatrace configuration uh, in a GitOps way. Thanks for watching.